Hi everyone and welcome back to Finance of JCL. Thank you very much for spending the past few day with me here. Today's video is a full breakdown of each of my individual stock and fund holdings for the UK element of my £1 million challenge portfolio. So I recently posted an update of the progress that I'm making overall. And I'll put a link down there below so you can have a look at that. And that is, am I on track to meet my very long-term investment goal of becoming an investment millionaire? Now, this is the UK elements of the portfolio that feeds into that. So you can see all of the holdings, the overall performance of them, and what's changed since last month. So let's get straight into it. Before we do, just to shout out, this is day four of the challenge of delivering 14 videos in 14 days. So let me know what you think about that and whether you think this is going well. So we'll do the, the pie charts as usual and we'll start with the biggest positions. So again, this is the FTSE 100 index track is the largest position and all the index trackers are blue on this pie chart. Um, you can see here overall it's up 23% and the brackets plus one means it is up 1% percentage point since the last update, which I think I shared of this portfolio detail about two months ago and it's in green because overall it's up now what you may notice from the last update is that this segment is slightly smaller it was more towards the three o'clock position it's just drawn back a bit and as this uh, continues to go up i'm starting to trim back this position i'm overexposed to the overall uk market not that it's a bad market but i think the rate of growth i'm going to get from it is quite low and i think i've got alternative investment whereby i could make a better return the so second up is one of my favorite companies which is viva that's up four percentage points since the last update two months ago and that's mainly because i think the dividend dropped in during that period so that's helped nudge up the overall return and in all cases the overall return is the capital plus dividend where the company pays one uh, that's a segment that's in green on the chart because that's a sort of financial insurance um, or insurance related company and you'll see there's quite a lot of those in my UK portfolio so we've got an orange segment here which is the small number of managed funds that I have and I've had this one since I think around about 2014 if memory serves it's one of the kind of legacy holdings that I had and it's doing absolutely excellently so we're up 166 percent on that so part of the 100 percent club and that's looking at the UK smaller companies of course, I'm sat here wishing now I put all of that blue segment into, into this fund, but uh, hindsight's a wonderful thing. That's another reason why I'm trimming that uh, index holding. So the other notable mutual fund here, which recently joined the 100% club, and that's just nudged up three percentage points in the last couple of months. So happy with that performance there. We then get on to FTSE 250, which is exactly the same level that it was at for me a couple of months ago in terms of the return. 44% and then the UK index is an overall it's up 18% and again I've trimmed that one and I'm expecting that one to decrease and when I find a really compelling new investment idea that I'm absolutely happy with then I'll probably take some money out of this one or the FTSE 100 tracker and put it into that new idea right K3 Capital Group this is a very small UK company I think the revenue is under 50 million pounds a year so we're talking micro cap I guess and this is a company I've got a lot of conviction on which is why it's one of my largest individual company positions in the UK portfolio well the second biggest after Aviva um, I think it's trading at something like £3.30 £3.40 at the moment and I've got my original position at 166 that I averaged in uh, a bit higher than that to increase the position size so overall that nets out at 65%. I'm really convinced of this. I can see this being a £5 stock, possibly even a £6 stock uh, within the next couple of years. And um, there's a lot of insider ownership on this one. Really happy with it. And I think there's a lot more to come. Unilever, so one of my older holdings, and this used to be a 100% club. It did drop down to 80 odd percent a few months ago, and it's just kind of been recovering over the last three or four months. And we're up to 96% now. Uh, and that one I was kind of unsure about whether to hold or not. They have announced um, a good share buyback program and there is a decent dividend. So I think I'm probably going to keep hold of that one now. And then we're on to 
BT or British Telecom for, for those of you that are a bit older in the UK. That's probably been the best performer, in fact, over the last two months, being up 21 percentage points since we last went through this. So 67% total, and I only got that one uh, a year ago. Um, I think my average is somewhere in the low one pounds, and we're getting towards around about two pounds. Yeah, really happy with how that one's going. And I can easily see that as a three pound stock. If it went up to four pounds or even five, it wouldn't surprise me. But really interesting what happens when they spin out the open reach of the infrastructure division, because that in itself will be a very profitable division. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, reevaluate at that point. Well, a uh, long time holding there. So that's trading about £14.50. I can see that eventually getting back to £20, particularly if the oil price keeps going up the way it's going up. A decent dividend that comes in, and that's now up 5% overall. But uh, as one of my cyclical holdings, yeah, I'll probably wait for that to get up to £18, £20, and then look to exit the position. So you can see here three quarters of the portfolio. Uh, going from that 12 to 9 position, uh, relatively small number of holdings for 75% of the value, and they're all um, in kind of good positive territory there, particularly the, the, the funds. So we now move into kind of the, the smaller holdings, and we've got legal in general. Now, a shout out to one of my viewers who recently requested a review of legal in general. So you can see, first of all, it's one of my holdings, which is about 28% on overall, and it's one I bought into last year. So I will happily up that one to the, the request list to review. City London Investment Group, this is another one I bought in as a slow grower, like legal in general, just in there for the dividend really, and hopefully a little bit of capital appreciation. And that's up about 31% again in um, under a year. So happy with that. And that's one of those companies that will just sit there and pay me a nice dividend over a long period of time. So I'm for Direct Line, it's probably a very, very stable company. Use them as a customer for many, many years. So I know the company well. Um, I'm not expecting a huge amount of capital growth from them, but if they can they get above that three pound a share mark um, and they pay, I think it's a 7% dividend at the moment. So again, I'll just collect that money. And you see the theme with the UK portfolio is I probably haven't got many fast growers here. You know, so far, out of all these ones we've looked at, K3 Capital is the only one I'd say is a fast grower with the potential for very large returns in a medium uh, term. There's a lot of dividend stocks here. Another dividend stock, British American Tobacco. I think that's going next dividend in less than a week. So if you're interested in that, you better check it out quickly. I think 8th of July is the date, but don't quote me on that. Uh, another bank, there's a theme here in Vestex. So that was at 0.33 or 0.3 book value when I originally purchased. Have a look at the link. I'm just going to flash up here if you want to know how to value a stock via the book value method. So we're up 85% on that, and I can see that there's further to go on this one. I could see this one get to 150%, and it does pay a dividend as well. So definitely keeping hold of that uh, for a while. Boohoo, which again is a fast grower, unusually. So unusually we've got here Boohoo, which is a fast grower. I could have got this at a lower average, but I was indecisive. So I've ended up with an average uh, in the... Uh, I think it's about 3.3340, which is probably a bit higher than I'd liked. And it's actually unusually been out of the news recently. It had a lot of news last year and at the start of this year. And the pricing is very volatile. And it's been out of the news for it, which is probably a good thing. So they can consolidate and just crack on with doing what they do well. Another financial related firm, so Duke Royalty, I would call them an alternative financer. And that's moved quite nicely in the last couple of months. We're now up 59% of that. I put that in the fast grower category, actually. The, the long-term potential of this is very, very large. It is going to take a long time to sort of compound to get there. Plus 500, so trading investment platform, paid a good dividend, had a good couple of years. I'm really looking into that moment to decide whether or not to hold it. Um, that's on the question mark list. Fever Tree, my favourite tonic water, as I always say, if you like gin and tonic, I would strongly recommend Fever Tree, not just because I've got a position in it, because it actually is a really good tonic. Let me know below in the comments if you agree with that. Uh, but yeah, 20% got that one last summer. Uh, could have got that cheaper a little bit, but it's uh, a good return for 12 months or so. 
Advanced Antivirus has recovered a little bit since our last review a couple of months ago in this portfolio. So it's just down slightly, does pay a dividend. And that's another one that I, I keep looking at and thinking, is this going to get me a sufficiently large return? Can I see this doubling? Can't quite answer that question having revisited it. So again, that one might be on the chopping block. Uh, but I'm not in any rush to make a decision. You know, I don't like to rush with sales because I, what I have found in the last year, I have sold the last couple of years. One of my main learnings is selling too quickly or too early. Uh, another uh, broker, Hargreaves lands down. So I really, really like the company. I really like the platform. Yeah, they're just uh, just below the waterline, minus two percent. A little fund here, which I got last uh, back in the last year, that's up almost fifty percent. And got Argo blockchain, which has dropped thirty seven percentage points to just plus one, and that's intrinsically linked to the value of Bitcoin. So I'm quite aware that's going to be all over the place potentially. I don't really care. Um, Bitcoin, I think, has a good percentage chance of becoming much much higher in the future. And that's my little play that if it does, this one could easily like five X, for example. But because it's a speculative, it is a very small part of the portfolio. The downside in terms of absolute pounds is limited, but the upside uh, is still decent. And then we've got the worst performers in red here, which thankfully are the two smallest positions. Yeah, great than gold regressing that. So based on that percentage. Yeah, I think that's linked. Well, that's linked to the gold price if that recovers, which again there's a there's an argument that says it could based on the likely inflation that's coming in many economies uh, and then we've got uh, effectively a defunct fund so that's portfolio now overall there's actually slightly less money in this portfolio than there was two months ago but the profit has increased and the reason it's slightly less in as i mentioned i've been trimming that for 200 and uk index two of those blue segments so that's gone out of this portfolio and not gone into any of these companies but overall, the amount of profit has increased for the holdings that remain. It's up um, in two months, um, two percentage points compared to where it was previously. Uh, which doesn't sound like much, but if you've got one percentage point a month on average, you're going to get over 12% a year, which is very respectable and would exceed my objectives. So I'm not complaining about that. So overall, the other thing to note is nothing has been purchased from this portfolio and just the trimmings that I mentioned there, no actual holdings have been sold in full. So it's very, very static. And as you can tell with that first sort of three ports, I'm pretty happy with a bit of trimming on the blue. And then there's a couple of question marks still in the kind of 11 o'clock zone, 11 to 12 o'clock zone there. Now, if you'd like to know when I'm buying and selling positions, not just in the UK portfolio, but with my US uh, positions, and even some of the, the Chinese companies that I've got, then the Patreon group is the place for that, where I'll have a discounted cash flow template updated there as well. I'll put the links below for that, but also I mentioned this is day four of 14 videos in 14 days, so I'll link the other three below if you're interested. And that includes the overall portfolio update, how to use, uh, calculate what is discounted cash flow. So I do hope that has been interesting, giving you some ideas. I just want to be kind of open around you know, how I'm getting to my target by what uh, what holdings rather than perhaps the overall view you see in the, the main portfolio update. Um, I, yeah, let you know what I'm thinking. It might inspire you and give you some ideas. So I hope it does. Um, but just remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't just go and copy my portfolio just because I've got it. If you do want to copy my portfolio, <laughs> Conversely, I do have the eToro uh, account, which I've just started as effectively a brand new, brand new account. I've just put a thousand pounds into that, and I'm just going to see what it's like managing a portfolio from scratch because I've never really been able to do that. Because this, uh, a lot of these UK holdings are kind of legacy ones. Right, there we go. Let me know below what you think, and uh, thanks for joining me. Have a good day. See you on the next one.